to me, I, I, I would call them not to use it again. I don't, I don't know. I want to welcome everybody to the Oh, that's you? Is, that's just me. Okay. Actually, the second public hearing uh, of 2015. You know, usually we meet first in Mount Vernon, and usually we meet in another room. But things change, times change, and here we are in a different room. Uh, and this is not the first meeting. It, uh, I would like to introduce the board, but first I want to tell you that we have three new board members. Uh, and ask you also, if you would, uh, because of last night's experience, if you could put your cell phones on, um, vibrate, that would really be uh, appreciated. We had a few rings last night when people were speaking. Um, our th three new board members, two of whom you I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, will recognize. Uh, one of them is Michael Rosenblatt, uh, who you know used to be our counsel, and he retired three years ago? Two or three years ago. Only 15 months ago. It seems like forever. I'm sorry. But anyway, we now have him back as a public member. Uh, he's replacing Joe Ewan, whose term expired. Uh, on May 31st, uh, Joe was, um, I don't think he, I don't see him here, uh, but I just want to say he was a board member for 22 years. He worked very, very hard, and uh, I just want to express publicly you know, our appreciation for all the hard work <coughs> that he did uh, over the many years that he was a member of the board, a public member. Uh, Elliot Cherson, you probably recall, uh, was a member a number of years ago for several years. Uh, he resigned. Carol Ann Cope uh, had replaced him at the time, but Carol Ann Cope resigned last year. And uh, we now have Elliot, who's been reappointed. Uh, so welcome back, Elliot. Thank you. And Valene Aqua, who I met for the first time uh, last night, who was replacing Ian Joseph. I'm sure you will remember Ian. He was in that Vernon residence, of course, and he was just a, a wonderful public board member and a wonderful guy. He, he died about a year ago, more than a year ago, quite unexpectedly and very untimely. Uh, we still miss him, but we're really very pleased to have Aline Aqua uh, joining us to replace him. She's got a wealth of experience in housing issues. She sat through her first public hearing last night, and she's still upright. She's still smiling. So welcome, Helene. Uh, our court reporter is uh, Howard Gresham. You've seen him before, of course. And Les, oh, I'm sorry. Well, let me introduce the other members who are here. Of course, Ken Finger, who is a, an owner, member, Jane Morgenstern, I mean, public member and chair. Elsa Rubin is a public member. Michael Yvette, he's of course a public member. Uh, Evan Jean Lofton Woods, tenant member. Genevieve Roche, tenant member. And uh, we also have uh, Chuck Lesnick, who's the deputy counsel and bureau chief of the Office of, of Rent Administration. Uh, before we begin the public time, hearing, sir. Oh, and he's going to be the timekeeper, yes. Uh, but before the public hearing uh, begins, I just would like to ask Chuck to get up and say, uh, give us some information on Scree and Dream, which uh, many of you, I'm sure, are interested in. So, Chuck, yes, thank the you. floor is yours. So, so last night in Yonkers, some of the people who were uh, concerned that their rents might go up were actually seniors or disabled uh, who are making less than $50,000 and paying more than a third of their income for rent. And they didn't realize that the state has a program where the municipality can opt in and they do not have to pay the rent increase for the Rent Guidelines Board or for the MCIs. The municipality makes that money up in the form of a tax abatement to the owners so that the owners are made whole uh, and the, the residents, the tenants, do not have to pay the increase. 
So when the state in Governor Cuomo's budget last year raised the income cap from 29000 to 51000 the city of Yonkers followed suit and raised it to 50000 Mount Vernon raised it to 40000 about a week or two ago. And Greenberg, tomorrow night, is signing into law a $40,000 range. Hastings, I believe, is going up in that whole park as well. Tonight, Tonight they're voting on it. And Croton on Hudson is as well. New Rochelle has gone up to 20700 And if you're in a different municipality, like Mamaroneck or Port Chester, you just have to wait for your municipality to increase it. Mount Vernon has not yet added the disabled rent increase exemption. They're just on screen, but they're very much considering it. So if you are disabled and you live in Mount Vernon, really talk to your council members. I think they're very eager to do it. It's just a procedural thing, um, so, so talk to them. And if you have any questions about SRI or DRI afterwards, remember it only affects seniors or disabled, 62 or above, who are paying more than a third of their income in rent, and are making in Mount Vernon less than $40,000 a year. And are in a regular department, of course. Otherwise, the rent guideline is of no uh, importance to you. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, we've been joined by Eddie May Barnes, a public member, so I want to note that for the record. Welcome, Eddie May. And uh, we can begin the public hearing uh, now for uh, this will affect the uh, the guidelines for individuals or departments <coughs> when, when the leases expire between October 1 and October 31 uh, of this year, or one and two year leases. Uh, before we start, if there's anybody who wants to speak and hasn't signed the sheet, please come do so now. I'm sorry, it's fired between October 1 and September 30. Thank you, Ken, for uh, correcting me. I was a little distracted. Uh, I'm going to ask, as we have in the past year, that speakers can find themselves to uh, three minutes for individual tenants and five minutes for people who are representing organizations. Uh, Chuck will be the timekeeper. Uh, we tend to be a little flexible, but not too flexible. So please keep that in mind. And also speak, of course, clearly and uh, loudly enough. You have no mics so that everybody can hear you and Howard Gresham can uh, take his notes without any difficulty. Uh, so with no further ado, Uh, our first speaker is Tamara Stewart. Should include you. Let me just make sure. If not, I think I have some extras. Make sure. Okay. This is this is a different one. This is the March issue. That one was the June issue. Well, let me just make sure that the court reporter has everything. Okay. Uh, okay. you already. Yes. You should be okay. So good evening, board members, advocates, and my fellow citizens. My name is Tamara Stewart, and I live at 30 Park Avenue, and I'm the treasurer of the Monticello Tenants Council. With almost 700 apartments in four buildings, Westchester Plaza is the largest rental apartment complex in the city of Mount Vernon. Since 2007, Westchester Plaza has been managed by Urban American Management, and the quality of life for tenants in my complex has been deteriorating rapidly ever since Urban American purchased Westchester Plaza. On page 23 of the March 2015 issue of the Mount Vernon Inquirer, 
I reported on the nightmarish conditions my neighbors on the seventh floor were enduring due to overdue and botched repairs on the building's roof. Men, women, children, and senior citizens living on the top floor were subjected to indoor temperatures well below the legal limit, excessive moisture that required tenants to cover everything in their apartments with black plastic garbage bags, and mop their ceilings every two hours, and hazardous black mold growing in numerous places throughout their homes. Many tenants were angered by the lack of communication and poor response from management, which provided tenants with inadequate space heaters that caused tenants' utility bills to skyrocket, and grudgingly offered tenants two months rent abatement for hellish conditions that existed for more than seven months. To date, the contractor is still working on the roof. I'm providing the board with copies of the March issue of the newspaper for your convenience. On May 27th, Dennis Hanratty sent a two-page letter to Westchester Plaza's property manager on behalf of the tenants of the Monticello building, citing 27 significant building-wide service reductions. I fully expect letters on behalf of the other three buildings in the complex to follow shortly, given that many of the deficiencies are common in all four buildings. I've attached a copy of Mr. Hanratty's letter for your convenience. Westchester Plaza residents are already being overcharged for services that we are due and not receiving, requiring us to pay even more money for a property that the owner refuses to maintain is adding insult to injury. Urban American management has a terrible reputation for being slum landlords and they have been successfully sued by tenants in several of their properties for failing to, to make necessary repairs. Do not reward landlords like Urban American for exploiting their tenants. Pass 0% increases and send a message to landlords that they need to earn their rent increases and not just demand them. Thank you. It's okay. It's all right. I have for you, ladies and gentlemen, a nice letter. members, my name is Giselle Manke, and I'm a small property owner here in Marburna. Can everybody hear? No. 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 Oh, all right, I have to speak loud. Okay, all right, okay, this is better. Okay, I'm, I'm, my name is Giselle Manke, and I have a small property, I'm a small property owner here in Marburna, okay? And also I belong to the BRI, and I'm on the advisory council. Uh, thank you for listening to me this evening. And I have here a nice uh, paper here. Um, last year, the next day after the last deliberation, I saw this in the newspaper. An article about the housing authority is in fiscal trouble, in a fiscal hole. So I like to know, 
I like to know how small owners then can survive. If a large corporation or the authority cannot make it go, they have big problems, and I'm sure there are more authorities here in this county, they're having fiscal problems. So what I, that's why I thought this article was very, very important. So we talk every year about increases. Increases of our water, it doesn't mean anything. To me, it seems like it doesn't mean a thing. So what I'm suggesting is, the increases are only there because we need the increases for property tax, water, insurance, maintenance. Now, if we hold down the taxes and the water prices, then we don't have to have an increase on the, for the tenants or for, for the property owners. Because you, the property taxes go up 6% here in Mount Vernon. And when the increase we would get maybe 2%, that does not make any sense. We are still in a big hole. And another thing, the small property owners, they want to keep the building intact. There's no increase. If we pay every year more and get less money for the apartments, then you cannot repair anything. Now, I, I have a suggestion here, and I'm not so sure if you would want to go along with this. I would like to get you on our side and work it together, that there is no increases on property taxes or on water, then we can keep the tenants happy, the landlords are happy, we don't have to pay more taxes, the taxes are tremendous, and also the water is, is outrageous, and it has never been that way. But the, the, the increase, you would allow us to, it would not make any sense because we are paying much, much more. So I would like you to become a coalition between you, the board, and the landlords. So there is no increase on the tenants. And the landlords don't have to pay that enormous amount of taxes. So I think this is the only way to do really fix this. Because every year there's a big fight and it doesn't come out to nothing anyway. And, and I do feel for some people that they cannot afford the increase. So if the municipalities, they have to keep the taxes, I would freeze the whole thing. And then nobody has a problem. Okay, all right. And thank you very much for listening to me. And I, this is a very, very good article. And this is not just one agency that's in trouble. There are many, many more. The only thing is I found it the next day in the newspaper. I thank you very much. Don't, don't just go away yet. Any board members have uh, questions or comments? Mr. Rosenblatt. <laughs> You're aware, I trust, that we set whether it's you know zero, or one or two, or a gazillion percent, whatever it is we do, is setting rates of rent adjustment for regulated properties. We can't control what municipalities do as far as freezing property taxes or water and sewer rates. Yeah, but then, then they will always go up because somehow it has to be adjusted. You know, we are talking about here, not about the big corporations, we are talking about the small business owner. Do you know, even in, in the one-family houses, people walk away because they cannot afford the taxes. So I think there is some kind of work, has to be work to be done to stop this. It, is, it cannot go on because the landlord, if he pays six percent more real estate tax, and then the, the the tenant somehow has to absorb it, it has to be <coughs> an equal footing. Also, if nothing will happen, then we're going to have slum because there is no money for maintenance left, none. All right. And then uh, we, we like to keep our buildings beautiful, and I know all the small landlords, they like to keep it nice and clean, and so there is no slum. We are creating slum again here. You know, that's exactly what happened many years ago. So I like Mount Vernon, I think a beautiful city, and uh, the whole county is beautiful. But we have to do something about it. Now, I, I would like you to really think about this disability tax. Maybe come on my side. Thanks so very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.
Good evening, everybody. I just heard that 22 years of being at the meetings is recommendable, so what's for me? I've been here 30 years. I'm a landlord in Mount Vernon, small landlord. Last year, my income rose 2%, exactly 2%. The big news this winter was that the fuel prices dropped, and we all know that when we go to the gas station. Unfortunately, the winter was also longer than normal, so I didn't see the total saving that I was hoping for. So the actual, the actual increase in my total expenses was exactly 3%. 1% more and the income rose. And that's on the gross notice, not on the profit. Now, also, I would like to comment on a couple of the speakers. I said, just because one landlord doesn't maintain the buildings, I don't see why a landlord like me, who keeps the buildings in perfect shape, should suffer from that. There must be other ways of punishing a, a landlord who doesn't behave. And that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I forgot to mention one thing. Uh, there are some expenses here in Mount Vernon that doesn't show up in our uh, sheets. Mount Vernon City decided not long ago that elevators and buildings that had elevators should live up to a standard of 1998. My building and elevator was built in 1927. Perfectly operational service, nothing wrong, passed this inspection, but because of the new rule, I now have to spend $100,000 on upgrading the elevator. 100000 that I don't have. So I had to go out and borrow the money and I got violations because I didn't live up to the new rule, even though the elevator is in perfect shape. So it doesn't even qualify for MCI. But this is a new rule of the state? It's a new city rule city that city of Mount Vernon, that elevators have to live up to a standard that was established in 1998, mm -hmm. a new code, mm -hmm. all kinds of things, and because the elevator was so old, uh, couldn't really fix it. And that doesn't show up on the expense statement. It's just sucking up. Yeah, I, let me just point out, we, no, nobody has the, uh, the tallied expense and income uh, surveys yet. We expect to get them uh, either tomorrow or certainly by, uh, all right, tomorrow, thank you. But, and we're having a meeting on June 4th at the offices of uh, the DHR uh, to go over these materials with the staff people, uh, to which, of course, it's a public meeting and anybody's welcome to attend. But I just thought perhaps it was a good time to mention that. Yeah. No, I, 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 we, no, we haven't seen them yet. They're, you know, the staff is uh, really working very hard with our county and the other counties. I think we're getting them first. So. Uh, the, the prior lady mentioned that there was a 6% increase in taxes in uh, Mount Vernon. <coughs> if you happen to have your own home here, if you don't pay the additional taxes, you would be losing your house. To think that a tenant shouldn't participate in paying in the increase of taxes because these are services that are provided to all of us, it's ludicrous. Yeah. It's something that we demand, it's something that we have to pay for, and taxes go up, we notice that every year. So why shouldn't a tenant pay when a homeowner does? Thank you, Mr. Larson. Thank you. Dennis Henry.
Well, I'm sure that's not for me, that's for Mr. Larson, right? <laughs> Uh, good evening, board. My name is uh, Dennis Hannity. I'm the executive director of Mount Vernon United Tenants. I'll keep my uh, comments brief tonight. I'll probably have more detailed uh, things to say on uh, Monday, especially after having seen the schedules. I just did want to respond to a couple things from last night, though. Specifically, when uh, Rachel Estroff, the chief of staff of uh, Assemblywoman Shelley Mayer, was questioned about by one of the landlord reps about, well, her boss, Shelley Mayer, called for 0% guidelines, and she was asked, well, what, are, what about our increases? If we have increased expenses and we don't get the 0%, uh, if we get a 0% guideline from the board, we're, you know, in, uh, in a hole there. She's relatively new on housing issues, Ms. Estroff, and she did talk about MEMCIs, which is good. But the key issue for that, uh, and which happens every year, and I talk about it, a lot of people don't, is the big money for the landlords is on the vacancies. I mean, every year we see in the schedules, the vacancy is where the landlords make the big money. Uh, that, that would have been the appropriate response. The guidelines that you guys pass are obviously very important and they can be painful to a lot of tenants. Uh, but the real money for the landlords comes in the vacancies. That's where they always make the big money. Uh, they get, there's a state statutory 20% vacancy bonus, and then if they do individual apartment improvements on vacant apartments, they can raise the rent 1 40th of the cost, and they don't even have to apply for that. It's only if they're challenged by an incoming tenant who usually doesn't know what their rights are to make complaints, and usually that's not the first thing an incoming tenant is looking forward to do is challenge the landlord, because they, first of all, they probably don't know that they have that right. And that's not something they're going to be inclined to do right away anyway. So very often we find out that landlords, you know, can just pad those expenses and they're not, they never have to even, they never have to even prove that in any way, means, or shape, or form. Ms. Aqua, you're the one new board member. Everybody, even though there's some new board members, people have been affiliated with the board. I'm going to provide you with a, a thing I did years and years ago about the evils of vacancy allowances and how that's really impacted all of the housing costs in Westchester. I once said at a, at a meeting with the then commissioner of housing here uh, in Westchester, not a guideline board meeting, but with, when they started for 11 out of 12 years back from the, 70, from the mid 80s to 1997, the, this board, the Westchester Rent Guidelines Board, not with you guys on it, passed a, a vacancy guideline for 11 out of 12 years of a 100% highest comparable rents. And I said the first time they did that, with one swipe of the pen, they did away with affordable housing here in Westchester. And I've been proven right on that. Because what's happened, they started raising rents like to beyond most people's ability to pay. Rents would go from 400 to 1,200, 500 to 1,500. And those are the standards by which every other rent was raised. Now that was done away in 1997 because the state passed a 20% vacancy bonus. But now the rents are all up that high anyway. You can't find a, an apartment that's even reasonably affordable to move into. So the real issue here is the vacancies. That's how this board is, uh, I mean, the landlords have really made out on this thing. So don't listen to the other things. The real issue is the landlords have made the money and they continue to make the money when they turn over apartments. That's why tenants get harassed all the time. Another thing I just want to talk about just very briefly is the whole the landlords, I think, have changed the whole narrative, and they've been very, you know, strategic on this. They've always, they keep talking about the market, the market, the market. The whole purpose, these are emergency laws because the market doesn't work. We don't have a market. Uh, very simple uh, functions of economics is you need a supply and demand for a market. There's not an adequate supply. There's no affordable housing out there. People have no housing options. So that's how the demand can be easily manipulated and tenants get squeezed all the time. You hear a couple uh, landlords get up and talk about one or two of their tenants who are paying artificially low rents. You've heard Tamara Stewart last night and tonight give compelling testimony about some issues. Uh, in her complex over here, I've been helping a lot of people there. When we talk about market rents, there's so many rents now, rent, rent stabilized rents, rent regulated rents, that are beyond market. The, a lot of people may not be aware of preferential rents. Preferential rents are such that the rent stabilized rents have gone beyond market. Landlords can't even get the rent stabilized rent. 
In her complex, virtually everybody in there is like one vacancy away from decontrol. Everybody's legal regulated rents is in the neighbor of $1,800, $1,900, $2,000 in Westchester Plaza. I mean, and what happens when you have rents like that, you continually have these turnovers because people move in hoping to pay and then they can't. So there's a lot of buildings like that where built with virtually all the tenants are just a, one or two vacancies away from being decontrolled. So, I mean, this whole... Okay, yeah. That, that's all I really want to say tonight. I'll have further comments. But, I mean, uh, those are the two points I wanted to make. I mean, the preferential rents. Some people may not be aware of preferential rents. Preferential rents are established that landlords can rent, the, can legally charge tenants less than the legal regulated rent. But what a, one real problem with that, it used to be that once you had a preferential rent that stayed for the balance of your tenancy, about 10 years ago that changed. Now they can go based upon a, le a lease renewal. They can go from the preferential rent to the rent stabilizer. So you have tenants who are paying $1,200 now to get a lease renewal. The rent goes up to $2,000. I mean, that's happening in New York City a lot, and it's happening more and more here in Westchester. It's a real, real ugly thing. But when we hear about the, the market stuff and how uh, we've got these tenants paying so little rent, some people are paying more than what? Uh, yeah, they're, they're paying. They, they can't even get the, the rent stabilized rents because they've gone beyond the market. So I think we should be aware of that. And a lot of that is because of this board's, most especially the 100% the highest comparable deals. So I'm going to provide Ms. Ackwell with the stuff I did years ago on the vacancies now, the evil uh, consequences of that. Well, if you give it to one person, why don't you Well, I've given it to you guys in the past. I'll give everybody another copy of that stuff. Oh, we have Yeah, I've given it to you a whole bunch of times. <laughs> so if you don't, I'll give it to everybody again. But I know Ms. Ackwell hasn't seen it, yeah. Oh. I have a question. Sure. You, you just said that the preferential rents used to stay for the balance of the tenancy. Tenancy, but yes. They don't any longer. Was that by law? Yes. Or just no, no, it's by, by court decision. I represent. Okay. I was the one that lost that case. Yeah, that was a court decision. That was a yeah, missionary sisters in the sacred heart. Yeah. So, 2001. 2001, yeah. It also depends upon the language of the uh, right. Yes. Rider. Yeah. Sometimes it's permanent. Yeah. Sometimes they're not. There's a horse. And it has to be in the lease. And it has to specifically okay. say that in the rider signed by the tenant and the landlord, as you know. So but it was, a, it was a court, it's court decision. Right. But there's been a change. I'm not, I'm still not clear. What's that? Has there been a change? No. 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 The question is what change unless the lease for the preferential rent has certain language in it. I, I understand that, but Dennis said it used to be, and it isn't anymore. Yeah, well, so up until the court decision it's been in 2001. By, 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 uh, board members here. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman and uh, the Rent Guidelines Board. My name is Albert Anunziata. I'm Executive Director of the, the Apartment Owners Advisory Council of Westchester County, representing uh, over 200 uh, owners of uh, properties, uh, both small, medium, and large throughout Westchester. And I would like to just comment on a couple of things. Um, uh, Mr. Larson, Elith Larson, brought up a, a good point. Uh, are, you know, you, you, one cannot fault an entire, Lord knows in this room we should know the lesson, one cannot fault an entire class of people or owners or any group because of the horrendous conditions and actions on the part of one management company, uh, I forget, and I forget the name, uh, uh, Urban, Urban, America. Urban America. Now, you know, it's a funny thing. 
I have an old fashioned, I, I grew up in this town. I grew up on West Lincoln Avenue in Mount Vernon across from the roller skating rink, but none of you are old enough to remember the roller skating rink on West Lincoln Avenue. I grew up, and I have an old fashioned notion about, about government and about activism and about progressive leadership. If I were mayor of this town, okay, I would be goddamned if I would let my people, my citizens of the city, live in such conditions. And I would. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, ask not what you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting my speeches mixed up here. But the thing is, I would be. I would be. I would be uh, uh, absolutely horrified if if uh, I would allow such conditions of tenants to to be subject to such uh, uh, conditions. Uh, where the, their health and safety is at question. Where is the building inspector? Where is the mayor? Where is the county health department? Where is the mandatory relocating of the citizens and getting that building cleaned up and finding the owners and managers the way it should be done? And, and we at the AOAC have a very high standard for our members. So uh, one cannot condemn uh, uh, an entire class because of the sins of one uh, particular uh, of, uh, company. And um, so, uh, you know, and also to go back to something Mr. Hanready said about owners being able to pad uh, uh, bills and everything like that. Um, you know, the, the, there are so many regulations and the DHCR uh, used to keep a list of the, uh, the bad boys and girls uh, in the industry uh, the B and D list, or, or whatever it was, and uh, for some reason, I guess because of budget cuts, they are no longer able to do that. Uh, that was a good program of the of the Division of Housing to keep track of those who complied with the law and those who did not, and we were all for that. And I'm proud to say that none of our members, to my memory, over the years, was on any of those bad boy lists of the Division of Housing. So uh, there are so many uh, safeguards right now. The governor has, uh, has a creator of the past few years, a very, a very aggressive tenant protection unit, TPU, uh, that's actually uh, investigating uh, MCIs that have been approved already uh, for owners and going over everything with a fine tooth comb. So the story isn't black and white. It, it is a very complicated story. It's a, the housing issue is a very complicated uh, relationship and a partnership between tenants and landlords and the particular municipality in which the housing is based. So uh, that's the point I would like to make. I would like, Mr. Hanratty, I would like to come back uh, in White Plains uh, to, for more extensive uh, remarks. But uh, those were just the issues I wanted to set the record straight. I'm appalled at that, at that story of that, uh, of that, of that uh, apartment complex. And if I were mayor of this town, of my hometown of Mount Vernon, I would say, I would I would I would rectify that yesterday. Thank you. Well, uh, we, are, we are like, uh, we're much smaller than, let's say, our counterparts in, in New York City, just like I would presume the tenant organizations here in Westchester are much smaller than the tenant uh, groups in, in New York City. But we're just like, let's say, a combination of CHIP or uh, Community Housing and Preservation or uh, the Rent Stabilization Association of the City. We represent, uh, uh, ours is a membership group, it's purely voluntary, we represent landlords uh, of, uh, of buildings throughout Westchester, and, and, and most of those buildings and, and are in ETPA communities throughout Westchester. So we're kind of like a chamber of commerce, except we're, we're an organization, a business group for uh, representing on behalf of, of, of the owners in, in Westchester. Do you charge any fees? There, there's a membership fee, like any chamber of commerce, sure. And would a small uh, landowner be able to afford that fee? Oh, oh, absolutely. In fact, because, let's say they own a small building, it's a flat fee because normally with a larger building we'll charge a nominal amount uh, per unit, you know. So, so for a smaller building, it's just like a flat fee 
and, and uh, if they have an eight or a six or eight or 10 unit building, it's a nominal amount compared to you know, landlords of much bigger buildings. So we heard a few um, small owners here. Yes. Do they belong to your administration? I don't recognize any, members? I'm only kidding. Yes, they're, they're actually all the ones who spoke are members of our group, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good to know. Thank yes. You. Mm -hmm. Mr. Larson and, and Ms. Banke and. I don't know, I see a hand raised, but this, is not, did you want to get up and I just speak? want to ask them a question. No, I'm, I'm, I have to apologize, right, but we apologize. can't have uh, <laughs> questions from you can, you can ask me later. That's okay. I don't, I don't mind. I don't mind. This is really a public hearing no. for the board to listen to representatives uh, who wish to speak and tenants who wish to get up and speak. So you can ask them after the, uh, the hearing is over. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, the only names left are Rosado and Smith. I am going to speak. Okay. Yes. Vida Carey. Okay, did you get that? Vida, V-E-D-A, Vida. What's your last name? Carey, C-A-R-E-Y. I'm sorry. Vida Carey, C-A-R-E-Y. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Yes, so good evening, Council. Um, my name is Vida Carey. I am a uh, tenant at the Monticello with Tamara Stewart. And um, I just wanted to voice my disgust. I've been living in that building since in 1980s. And the rodent infestation is unbelievable. Last October, I killed 18 in a matter of weeks. I call management. Because they haven't exterminated, they don't feel it's a real problem. I'm petrified. I'm paying a lot of rent to live with mice. And I don't think that should happen. I agree with Mr. Annunziata, is that? Yes, that, you know, where is the health department? I have called when my son was two weeks old. They shut my apartment down. And I think I need to call again, but I do think that a part of the roofing problem, the rodent problem, it's just disgusting. And they should be held accountable and they constantly want to go up on everybody's rent. So I just wanted to talk about the rodent infestation at the Westchester Plaza Urban America. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Members of the, the board, uh, all the tenants and respective landowners. My name is Larry Johnston. I'm a resident of 30 Park Avenue, Mount Vernon, New York, uh, the Monticello. 
I, I understand the frustrations of my fellow tenants. And I also understand that this is about rent increases. It's not, a, it's not just, a, it's, it's not, we, we, we will, we have, we will take to task the city and its prospective owners, um, uh, uh, departments, mm -hmm. but we, we cannot lose focus on the fact that there's a major concern of rent increases. Uh, the rent, as it stands, is high. And I personally, well, I, along with many of the members here, are asking for a 0% increase. The, I, I, I've heard from uh, some owners, some small business, some small own, apartment owners, build, apartment building owners, and they have some legitimate concerns. However, there are some legitimate answers for them, and it does not require a, 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 rent, a rent increase. Uh, there are solutions other than a rent increase that I, I believe the, 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 I don't know if it's an attorney, but very well spoken, but there, there are other solutions that is gladly provided for, for, for them, for the owners, and I believe that they, if, if they're not aware of it, they should uh, be, should find, find somebody to take care of. Uh, there was also, uh, to, to make them aware of it, there was also a member, a, a, a member of the, the, uh, the, the owners. She, I must say gracefully, asked for the, the board, if, if the board could partner with the owners, but there's, there's a key, I have a problem with that, a big problem. Three minutes are up. We'll yes, but okay, what about the, what about the, 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 uh, the, the tenants? Shouldn't we also be included? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. How long have you lived at 30 Park? Five years. Five years. Yes. And if I'm not being real personal, is it rent? Yes. It, it, it goes up every year. According to the guidelines. According to the guidelines. Well, I, I, I signed a two-year two lease, right. so it goes up every two years. Right. What I'm asking for, well, what I believe we're, what we're asking for is some relief. And that's why I believe that we are here to ask for a, respectfully for a 0% increase. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. You're welcome. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. already that on June 4th at the offices of the Vision 75 South Broadway on the third floor in 
White Plains, uh, the Rent Guidelines Board will be meeting. It'll be a public meeting uh, to review the tabulations uh, and the schedules for the, with our staff members, with the division staff members. Tuesday, June 16th, in the White Plains Library Auditorium. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I, let me back up. Monday, June 8th, is the third and final public hearing. It will be at White Plains City Hall at 7 p.m., 255 Main Street. This is not where we usually have it. It's usually in the courthouse, but it will be in White Plains City Hall next Monday, June 8th, 7 o'clock. Uh, June 16th, in the White Plains, it's hard to keep this stuff straight, at 7 o'clock in the White Plains Library Auditorium at 100 Martine Avenue, we will have the presentations of the owner and tenant positions. Uh, they'll each have 20 minutes uh, to divide up between them. These are the board members who will be making the presentations. Uh, and finally, Monday, June 22nd at White Plains City Hall, uh, 255 Main Street, 7 p.m. We will uh, have rebuttals by the owner and tenant members of the board and the discussion and vote on the guidelines. Uh, so I think that wraps it up, unless I've forgotten something, anybody? So do I hear a motion to adjourn? Yes. So moved. Well, Elsa got there first, so motion to adjourn by Eddie May Barnes and seconded by Elsa Rubin. All in favor? Aye. I assume it's a Thank you very much, and thank you all for coming out on this uh, rainy night. Thank you.